And I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation. And so uh, I'm going to talk about some uh, the, the quadratic uh, art and conduct of a uh, motivic spectrum. And this is a joint work with Anding Yang. So basically it's uh, some, uh, I will also talk about some quadratic conductor formulas, uh, but our approach is uh, some, somewhat different from uh, the other talks and is more a uh, sheaf uh, based on a sheaf theoretic approach. So let's start uh, with some, uh, something more elementary, which is the categorical traces. Uh, so if C is a symmetric monoidal category, um, and if X is an object of C, we see that X is dualizable if uh, you can find another object of X dual. Plus, um, the unit map from one to X tensor with X dual, and the co-unit map from X dual tensor X to one. So one is the monoidal unit, such that we have two commutative diagrams. So X to X tensor with X dual, tensor with X, and here is eta tensor with one, and this is one tensor with epsilon. So this thing commutes, and the other one also commutes. So this is one tensor with eta, and this is epsilon tensor with one. And for a dualizable object, uh, we are we can define the categorical trace so if u is a map from x to itself uh, we define the trace of u to be the following composition which is the map from u to x tensor x dual and then we apply u tensor with one which uh, maps to x tensor x dual, and we switch the two factors, and we go back to one. Um, so the trace of u is an endomorphism of the unit object. And in particular, we have, so this, this is what is called the categorical trace. In particular, we define the categorical Euler characteristic um, which I call the chi of x which is the trace of the identity morphism of x Okay, so this is a very general construction which uh, works in many uh, frameworks. For example, um, if K is a field and uh, we let C to be uh, SH of K and M is a dualizable object in C then we can define the Euler ca categorical Euler ca characteristic of M, uh, which lives in the endomorphism of the unit of K, which is isomorphic to GW of K. 
uh, which is the Grothendieck Witt group uh, of uh, non -de degenerate symmetric bilinear forms over K. And in general, that's, uh, uh, that's how we get uh, quadratic, some quadratic information from uh, motivic homotopy theory. Okay. And so that's the categorical Euler characteristic, um, which I can consider to be some version of a global trace map. So um, if we look at, uh, for sheaves, or let's say for etal sheaves, and if we work with dualizable objects, Um, that somehow corresponds to, so there is a more geometric notion of this. So to be dualizable uh, amounts to say that the cohomology have uh, uh, locally constant and constructible cohomology. Um, but um, there is a different notion. So that's uh, dualizable. Basically, it means just means locally constant sheaves. But uh, for sheaves, there is a better notion which behaves uh, better in the six functors, which is uh, the notion of constructible sheaves. Um, and not every constructible sheave, uh, sheave is dualizable. So not every constructible sheaf is locally constant. For example, you could look at the uh, J lower shriek of, uh, of the constant sheaf ext extension by zero. So that's not a, um, a, a locally constant sheaf. And so the general spirit is that um, these two, uh, so dualizable things and constructible things, uh, they actually represent two kind of dualities. So uh, you have a global duality, which says that if f is dualizable, then the canonical map from f to you apply f dual, and you apply this twice. This is an isomorphism. Um, so that's the general duality. But um, there is another version, which is called the local duality, or Verdier duality which says that if f is constructible, then, so you look at this functor d, uh, let's say x over k is separated of finite type. Uh, so f from x to k is a structural morphism. And you define this local duality functor to be uh, this r -hom of f with values in f upper shriek of uh, lambda k. And the local duality is a statement which says that if f is constructible, then the canonical map from f to uh, this dx over k, you apply this twice, uh, this is an isomorphism. Okay, so this is somehow the local duality. And this is the global duality. And in the same spirit, you could do something like this. So uh, let's say uh, x to s is a morphism, uh, let's say a separated of finite type. And I take E to be something in SH of S. And uh, let's assume that V is a virtual vector bundle on X. And then you can, uh, inside SH, you can define uh, some twisted E cohomology. as this, so E uh, N of X twisted by B, V, this is, uh, 
So this is from the unit of x. And you put f upper star of e and shift it by n. And you smash with the Tom space of e. So this is the e twisted e cohomology. And here, which corresponds to this, you have a notion of uh, twisted um, Borat-Moore e homology. So this looks like this. So e n of x v. This is uh, the unit of x shifted by n and smash by Tom space of v. And here you put f upper shrink of e like, like this. So this is the Boromo homology theory here. For example, as we have seen, um, the Chow groups are uh, a type of Boromo homology. So, uh, so in, in categories of sheaves, uh, for example, motivic sheaves, uh, you have this, uh, these two type of things. And uh, what I'm going to talk about is that, so you, here you have the global duality and you have the formalism of traces. And here you, we actually have a version that corresponds to uh, the Boromo type uh, trace. So uh, historically, it was originally due to Verdier, and then uh, written down by uh, Illusi uh, in SGA5. And much later, it was exploited uh, by Ab Abes and Saito. And more recently, uh, a more categorical framework is established by Lu and Chen. Um, so it looks like this. We first define a, a cohomological uh, correspondences. So we fix a scheme S. And we define C of S which is, in fact, a two-category of cohomological correspondences. So uh, its objects are pairs XL with X is a scheme over S. So this is a separated of finite type. And uh, L is a constructible uh, motivic sheaf on X. And we define the home groups to be something like this. If we have two pairs, XL and YM, uh, we define the morphisms to be like this, to be a pair C, U, where C is a morphism from another scheme S, a big C, to X times S over Y. So you can view such a morphism C as, a, as two morphisms, C1 and C2. So C1 is uh, from C to X, and C2 from C to Y. 
and U is uh, a map from C1 upper star L to C2 upper shriek of M. Okay, so we have objects and uh, we define the home groups and we need to define the composition of homes. So if we have two, uh, if we have three objects, XL, YM, and ZN, so let's say this is CU, and this is, this is DV, I define the composition to be uh, the pair EW. So it looks like this. Um, you look at this C times Y uh, over Y D um, that goes to D goes to C. So that's the first projection and that's the second projection. And you apply D do uh, D2 to to Z and this by C1 goes to X. And you have this. Okay, so that defines a morphism here. And that's E1, and that's E2. I, and I define the morphism uh, W to be this composition. So P1 upper star, C1 upper star, L. It goes to P1 upper star, C2 upper shriek of M. So this is P1 upper star of U. And then we can exchange, uh, sorry, this is an, not an isomorphism, to P2 upper shriek and D1 upper star of M. And then we apply P2 upper shriek of V to go to P2 upper shriek, D2 upper shriek of M. What was the question, sorry? Sorry, I, I'm, I'm wondering why you define the, I mean, CU, you define the morphism U from C1 upper star L map to yes. CR upper shrink M. Why, why the second one you choose uh, C, C2 upper shrink? Ah, this is discovered by Berdier. You mean by that duality theory, so you have to choose? Um, well, he proved, uh, this is proved by Verdier that uh, everything works with this choice. Yeah. All right, sorry. Um, yeah. And you can even define the two morphisms. So if you have two, uh, uh, two things, CU and uh, DV, which are home from XL to YM. And then you define the two home. U to DV um, to be um, 
the morphism P from C to D, which are proper, such that uh, you have D1P equals C1 and D2P equals C2, and such that you have commutative diagram like this. So D1 upper star L. And so it goes to D2 upper shriek of M. And it's P lower star, P upper star, D1 upper star L, which is the same as, so P is proper, so that's the same thing as P lower shriek, and C1 upper star L. And you apply U to P lower shriek, C2 upper star of M. That's the same thing as, uh, sorry, C, that's C2 upper shriek. Uh, same thing as P lower shriek, P upper shriek, D2 upper shriek of M, and that goes this way. So uh, I require that this uh, diagram commutes. Uh, but uh, indeed, it doesn't really matter the two homomorphisms. And now I'm going to define a symmetric monoidal structure on this uh, category, or even two category. Yeah, so, so this is N, right? upper left and you go to uh, lower left and you could also go the other way around okay. yeah and so you have a symmetric <coughs> monoidal structure uh, first on objects um, it's x l turns with x prime l prime uh, that's defined to be the fiber product over S. And uh, that's the box product. So it just means that you pull back uh, L to, to this and tensor, tensor with L prime pull back, pull back to this. So this notation just means that. And we need a tensor, uh, tensor product on morphisms. So if you have Cu from XL, to y n and c prime u prime from x prime l prime to y prime n prime. You define um, c u tensor with uh, c prime u prime to be a certain pair d v. So d uh, is the morphism is the pair, so you look at this uh, C1 tensor uh, fiber product over with C1 prime, and C2 times over S C2 prime. And V is this map, so you look at D1 upper star of L box times L prime, so that's uh, the same thing as C1 upper star L box times C1 prime upper star L prime. And you just apply the U and U, U prime component wise to C2 upper shriek of M and box times C2 prime upper shriek M prime. And um, there is uh, actually a Kunes transformation, which need not always be an isomorphism, but there's a map. So it goes to D2 upper shriek of M tensor with uh, M prime. And 
Yeah, so the symmetric monoids, those structure, you can make it two categorical. So the tensor product for the two morphisms is induced um, by the fiber product over S uh, in schemes over S. So, um, so we have category, symmetric monoidal category, and this category has very nice properties. So uh, the unit, the monoidal unit, is just S, and you look at the, the unit object. And uh, this is actually a closed symmetric monoidal category, which means that you have internal homes. So uh, internal home of XL to YM is given by the pair uh, X times over SY. And we look at the, the R home. Or uh, I don't write the derived things. It's, uh, it's PX upper star L to PY upper shriek of M. And, yeah, and here comes a uh, theorem on this uh, category. So you have a symmetric monoidal uh, category and you want to learn what are the dualizable objects there. So if you, if, if you had taken the, 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 the usual symmetric uh, monoidal ones, you, are, you just get the usual dualizable objects. But here, since we have changed the structure, there's a very beautiful theorem uh, due to Lu and Chen. Um, so in, in SH, there's uh, some work by myself, and, but also in the recent work of Price, so the statement is as follows. So if you have a, an object XL uh, in CS, then this object is dualizable if and only if uh, L is a constructible uh, motivic spectrum. And, but also, it says that is satisfies the following condition, so the pair uh, is universally locally acyclic over S. So I will abbreviate this as ULA. And so this condition um, has uh, different interpretations, but one of them you can define it uh, directly. So this XL is ULA over S if and only if for any Cartesian diagram like this. So you write down X over S and you make a base change X, X, S prime to X prime and you look at another one by T. So this is Y. You call this F and G and P and Q. So XL is ULA over S if and only if uh, for every such di a diagram like this and for any uh, M in SH of T, you have a canonical map which is L restricted to X prime. You, uh, you tensor with F upper star and P lower star M that goes to 
Q lower star of Q upper star L uh, tensor with G upper star of N. And this is a nice homomorphism. Yes, so L lives here, and you just pull it back to X prime. Uh, well, let's assume that all morphisms are separated of finite type. Or, yeah. Remember that GABA has a result which says that some, some, something like locally, uh, localized cyclic is the same as universally localized cyclic. Maybe if you for uh, so That's for etal sheaves. But in this situation, that's true. I don't know. Okay. So, uh, yeah, universally just means that um, it is true. I mean, if you hide the, the step in the middle and you do this directly, you probably uh, could call this locally acyclic. And you say that this is uh, true after any base change, that's uh, universally locally acyclic. Because uh, for uh, for a cohomology, when you look at this, you just uh, basically re reduce to the case of uh, Hansenian traits, and then uh, if you like look at so look at if you just take m to be the the the, the constant sheaf, and if you look at this on a cohomology, uh, basically it says that uh, so the cohomology of L has no other cohomology than the degree zero one. Oh. Yeah. But uh, all these are way too abstract, and uh, let me make some examples. So, for example, if x over s is smooth, um, then any change, any base change of x over s is still smooth, and you have the smooth base change. So, in that case, uh, that that map uh, can be simplified, and. Uh, if L is dualizable, that means that uh, XL is uh, ULA over S. So, uh, so for a tau sheaf, uh, sometimes it is called smooth sheaf. So smooth sheaves and smooth morphisms are universally locally acyclic. And uh, another example is given by, so this is due to Olson, first for dm with rational coefficients and due to our uh, previous joint work. So if S is spec k, then, uh, so k is a field, then anything we invert p, so p is the, uh, ex the exponential characteristic of k. So this thing is universally locally acyclic over k. And, uh, but also due to Cezinski, same for s equals to spec k. Uh, this also works for uh, if you look at H motifs, uh, you can do this with integral coefficients. Um, basically, uh, this is because for H motifs, you can use the Delin's method to, to prove uh, the generic base change. Sorry, I 
Yes. Okay, yes. So basically, uh, um, this result um, we use resolution singularities. So in positive characteristic, we could use uh, the De Jong alteration uh, instead. I mean, De Jong Gaba alteration. So. Uh, uh, we need to invert P, and if you assume strong resolution of singularities over K, and if K is perfect, then you could you can remove this uh, one over P. Yeah. Um, okay. Can we also describe which morphism you have adjoined? If you get it into the school or anywhere? What does that mean? Yes. A joint. Yes. Uh, what does that mean? Well, you can ask for the composition, the mass and identity to the composition of the arrow. Mm -hmm. The same thing the other way. The same thing before joint in it. Ah. Can you describe the. I don't know. Sorry. Um, so, um, so we know what the dualizable objects in this category are, and we can look at this uh, the categorical trace in this CS. Yeah. So, um, uh, actually, this is um, a quite a quite fancy thing because uh, th these theorems actually they don't require S to be regular. Because if you look at this, um, this local duality, like uh, f to d of x over s of dx over s of f, so if s is regular, then you can expect an f is constructible. Then there are, there are reasons to expect this map to be isomorphism. But if s is singular, this doesn't work. It shouldn't work. But uh, here, uh, the dualizable object in this category, they work also with singular S. So that's very interesting. And we can take the categorical trace in this, um, this category. So if um, XL is dualizable, which means that uh, universally locally acyclic, and uh, I take an endomorphism of uh, this thing. Um, so uh, actually, we use an, uh, a variant of the categorical trace. So let's write p from x to s. And I will fix some map from e in sh of s. Um, because uh, we wish to take values in uh, E cohomology or e, Boromore E homology. So uh, in our talk, E will be the, the, the Milnavit uh, spectrum or something like that. And I denote by E upper shriek of X over S to be the P upper shriek of E. And I denote K X over S to be uh, the unit upper shriek. So, so in this case, we can define the trace of this uh, thing, which is a map from the unit of x c to k of x c over s. Uh, but you, you, but you could uh, look at this in your first week. 
And this Xc is the fiber product of C with X over X times X. So here X maps to here via the diagonal map. And in particular, if you take the identity morphisms everywhere, you get um, the trace of identity, identity. Uh, this lives in the unit of x to e of the shriek of x over s. So if you take uh, e to be the uh, Munovit spectrum, this, uh, sorry, not yet. Basically, uh, if S is a spectrum of uh, a field, and you take E to be this, and then this is um, the Chauvet group of zero cycles over X. And I denote uh, this to be the CX over S of L with values in E. So this, uh, I call this the E valued Uh, relative characteristic class. So for example, if x over s is smooth, then you could look at cx over s, the unit. Uh, then this is nothing but the Euler class of the tangent bundle over x. And uh, if x equals s, then this uh, cx over s, this is just uh, this, this Euler characteristic of L. And we have a theorem, which is a big theorem, called uh, uh, Lefschetz Verdier formula. So uh, basically, Lefschetz Verdier formula, it says that uh, this relative characteristic class is compatible with proper push forwards. So if you have this uh, morphism of S schemes with P proper, and then you have P lower star of uh, trace of CU, this is equal to. Uh, the trace of P lower star of CU. So in particular, you get CX over S uh, F. This is equal to CY over S of uh, P lower star F. Uh, because this uh, local acyclicity is, pro is also pro preserved by uh, proper push forwards. So um, to, to state an example, so let's assume that x over s is smooth and proper. And then you could look at, uh, so this is p, p lower star of c x over s of 1. And that's just c s over s of p lower star of 1. So this is nothing but the categorical Euler characteristic of x relative to s. And this thing uh, is equal to p lower star of the Euler class of the tangent bundle of 
x over s. So this formula is called the motivic uh, gauss bonnet formula. Uh, which is due to Levine and uh, generalized by uh, joint work with Degliez and Kahn. So in fact, uh, the, the motivic gauss bonnet formula is a particular case uh, of the lefschetz verdiev formula, which is just the proper uh, proper covariance of the, uh, of the, the trace map. Okay. So, so far we have seen uh, very formal things which are just uh, the global trace formulas. So now I'm, I'm going to talk about some uh, conductor formulas. So we are inspired by uh, uh, this uh, grothendieck oak shafarevich formula. Which is a classical formula which computes uh, the Euler characteristic of an etau sheaf over, over a curve. So we assume that k is algebraically close and x over k is a projective smooth projective curve and f is uh, uh, a constructible sheaf, a tau sheaf on x which is locally constant outside a finite number of points So in, in, in general, um, you can always find uh, something like this. And this formula, this GOF formula says that the Euler characteristic of uh, F, which is uh, by definition the alternating sum of dimensions of the cohomology groups uh, uh, of F, this is equal to the rank of F. So this is locally constant outside a finite number of points. So um, if it is locally constant, it has a rank uh, times the Euler characteristic of the constant sheaf minus uh, an error term, um, which is the sum over the points of the Artin conductor of this. So this is the Artin conductor. Um, this formula was uh, later generalized um, by Cato and Saito to higher dimensions. So uh, this GOS formula basically says that uh, the Euler characteristic of a sheaf, it depends not only on the rank, but also on these things. So these uh, Artin conductors actually, they characterize the wild ramifications of F at these points. And control... Contrary to the characteristic zero case, so you have, so in the Arden conductor you have uh, some uh, some part related to the stalks of F at this x high, but also there is another part called the Swan part, uh, which uh, uh, characterizes uh, wild ramifications. So our goal is to uh, promote this uh, to a quadratic uh, formulas. So, um, right, so in this formula, there are three terms, the Euler characteristic, which is already defined, and you have the, you have the rank and the Artin conductors. So uh, let's start with this. So if F, uh, let's see.
Right. So this rank is, called, is just the generic rank. So f is locally constant uh, on, on a dense open subscheme of x. And if we go back to sh, so we assume that k is a field and x is smooth over k. And so, uh, so here x, so here f is locally constant outside a finite number of points. And uh, in, in, in for, for SH, we assume we take Z to be a closed subscheme of X, which is nowhere dense, nowhere dense, closed subscheme. And I take uh, U to be the, the open complement. So, and the analog is to say that uh, I have some constructible motivic spectrum such that uh, k restricted to u is dualizable. And in this, in this setting, we try to prove an analog of this formula. Uh, so uh, we start with the rank. So the rank is actually the, uh, the categorical trace of f because f is dualizable on u. So if we do the same construction with uh, here, you sh we should get um, the order characteristic of k restricted to u. This is an endomorphism of the unit of u, which uh, isn't that good uh, because here we, would, we actually would like a unit on x. So we want to lift. to uh, the endomorphism ring of the unit of x. And so, um, yeah, so here the thing we, 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 we have decided to do is to, I mean, just as I said, we take values within some spectrum and we take values actually in the Mudervit spectrum. So uh, it's open, obtained like this, so SH of K and that goes to the A1 derived category of K. So there, there's some adjunction here, and that goes to um, the M tilde of Mühlenwitt motifs. So uh, actually I have to assume K is uh, infinite here, but I, I expect that this condition can be removed. So this is because we need uh, things to work here. And this is gamma lower star, gamma upper star, and this is n, and this is k. So, Mulevit spectrum, this is just k of gamma lower star of 1, which lives in SH of k. And uh, this Mulevit spectrum actually represents uh, Mulevit motivic homology. And so here is our theorem. So uh, we take E to be H Mionovit of lambda. And we show that if uh, lambda is either Z1 over 2, or if um, the co-dimension of X over Z is at least 2, then this uh, all of characteristic over u lifts uh, to a unique 
element in E of x. So we have here we call this the rank of k with values in E. Okay, um, this is because, so the whole dimension two condition is uh, because that when we try to lift, we look at uh, some exact sequence, and there is a co-kernel which is non-zero, but it's given by the, the uh, uh, certain quotient, certain co-kernel of uh, a direct sum of over co-dimension one points uh, in X uh, of the width groups of the residue fields. So if the co-dimension is at least two, then there's no such obstru obstruction, then you can, you can lift. And for the two inverted case, it's another technique. So uh, this is because you look at this um, set one over two. This is isomorphic to the motivic heilenberg maclean spectrum with two inverted plus uh, the real etat uh, spectrum uh, with two inverted. So this is a theorem of uh, degrees Cassel, uh, Bachmann, and Jacobson. So here, this is just motivic heilenberg maclean and we can, and so this part actually vanishes. And here, you can use some real etal techniques, which I will, won't talk about here. Uh, right, so we have settled uh, this rank thing, and it, re it remains to define the outing conductor. So, uh, so we are actually motivated by this GOS formula, so the outing con conductor is supposed to be the remaining term of this. So the idea is if, if K is globally dualizable in general it is not, it is just dualizable over some dense open subset. If it, but if it's, it is uh, globally dualizable then um, the Cx uh, of K is nothing but the rank of K times um, the CK of the unit. And in general, the difference should be supported on um, the, the bad locus, which is Z. Uh, but, um, I mean, it's just like child groups, if you have uh, s some, s some cycle on X that is uh, zero on U, uh, you can, it lifts to some, some cycles on Z, but you, you don't have a canonical choice. So you have to do something here. And, uh, right, and the, the thing we do here is, you look at this, you define F, a triangle to be the cofiber of this thing. Goes to F upper freak of, of, uh, of the thing. So this is a uh, uh, cofiber in the, uh, uh, in SH. So uh, the definition uses high, higher categories, but if F is closed immersion, you can de define this more directly. So I triangle of thing is just I upper shriek of something tensored by J lower star of the unit. 
So we don't need, need uh, actually need the higher categorical structure, and we on, we actually only need this uh, uh, the case of closed immersions. And you look at this delta to be x like this. And I assume this, uh, k is dualizable on u. And then you have uh, this, you, we define another, another class, bkf, uh, k, b of x uh, supported on z of k, which is i lower star of one z that goes to i lower star, i upper star, delta triangle, delta lower star, the unit of x. And then this, um, there's a certain unit map, delta triangle of uh, d of k, and so with k. And here you can erase this actually. So this is because k is dualizable over u, so um, you have some uh, duality things. And this maps to delta triangle, uh, delta lower star of this. So, um, so the situation looks like this. Where is that? The top, at the bottom of the board, there, the chi, k is just the U, e. Oh, right. That's just the usual order of characters? Yes, so this lives in uh, E of U. Yeah. So the... Okay, the endomorphism and the identity is... There. Right, and I take uh, evaluation in E. Yeah, so it's yes. in Milner-Vick Right, exactly. And yeah, we need to study this lifting property if it lifts to a global thing. Not always, if one of these conditions is satisfied. There are some obstructions, actually. All right. So, uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So generally, this is like some, some sort of an MVP theory here. Yes, it's the badness of this transformation. So uh, you look at this. So I lower star of the unit of the Z, and you have this E upper shrink X over K, and you have uh, this. This is uh, F upper star of X, X, which I just write E X, and this map is induced by the Euler. Euler class. And that one, you have uh, the cofiber of this thing is just a delta 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 lower star of this. So here, this, uh, this sequence is called the Euler fiber sequence. So somehow this guy is the, uh, is the cofiber of the, the Euler class. And we defined a map. Um, B X Z of K of E, and the idea is to wonder if this thing can be lifted. Uh, right. <coughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I try to finish. So uh, this uh, lifts uh, if uh, lambda if we invert two or co-dimension is as at least two, or um, x is odd dimensional. And so this map, I call this Cxz of k, 
okay, this value is in E. And I define this Artin conductor of K to be the minus of the degree of this class And so now I will state our um, theorem for the conductor formulas. So first, um, the Euler characteristic of K, um, if we invert two, then everything always works. And uh, secondly, if let's assume that k has characteristic different from 2 and dimension of x is odd, then uh, we have a better formula which, uh, with integral coefficients. So that's equal to the rank of k et al times the Euler characteristic of the constant sheaf minus the Artin conductor of k, uh, which lives in GW of k. Yeah, so basically that's, um, in odd, odd dimensional uh, case, we can we obtain some equality in GW of K. And the, the, the proof for the second case actually uses uh, some results of Mark Levin, which says that in the odd dimensional case, this thing uh, is always hyperbolic. And uh, if you look at the Euler class, then uh, the width part of the Euler class is trivial. So I would like to stop here. Thank you. It's just some technical conditions we, which we didn't manage to uh, remove. I mean, the way we proved inverting the half is just using this, the isomorphism here uh, up there. So you, you, so first you prove this for H Z, and then for the real etar part, you need, you just use some stuff. Yeah, yeah. So the sheaves on real etar schemes are rather easy to understand, at least for the Grothendieck group. Um, you take uh, you take the rank. I mean, there are two ranks, but you, you take the rank of this. Is it clear then that the rank recovers the Artin conductor? Uh, yes, because you can take H Z, and everything is compatible with etal realizations. And uh, yeah, in, in the classical. Uh, in some sense, yes, but uh, yeah. Earlier in the talk, I mean, because you defined these two categories of correspondences, but I think you didn't really use the two morphisms. Not really, yeah. So, uh, so there must be some other reason for these two morphisms to be there. I mean, is this why? Uh, the yeah, there, there were uh, there were some categorical constructions in Lu and Jun on these uh, two morphisms, but uh, I didn't really understand that. But uh, otherwise, the, the categorical trace is uh, is classical, and it's in uh, the RDA. Yeah. Any more questions? All right, so let's thank Kangjo again. Okay.